Hello, everybody. Now, I'm going to talk about defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. Well, the first note is, as I have told you before, a relative clause is like an adjective. It comes after a noun, and it either defines this noun or just gives extra information about it. Let's have a look at the example given here. She is the secretary who helped me a lot with the necessary documents yesterday. Who helped me a lot with the necessary documents yesterday defines the noun secretary. It in a way acts like an adjective for the noun secretary. That's why it is essential, it is important for the meaning of the whole sentence. Like in the example above, if the relative clause gives necessary information about the noun it follows, it is a defining relative clause. A relative clause is like an adjective. It comes after a noun, and if it just gives extra information about that noun, it is a non-defining relative clause. Let's see it in the example here. Everybody in Turkey knows Mr. Erdogan, who is the president of the country. Who is the president of the country gives extra information about the noun Mr. Erdogan. Because non-defining clauses give extra information, they should be put into commas. Can you have a look at the statement after Mr. Erdogan? Okay, we need to put a comma to the statement. Okay, there is an another, there is another example for us. My father, who lives in Holland, see, I'm giving information about my father. My father, who lives in Holland, is coming home tonight. This information, extra information, or non-defining relative clause must be put into comma. Well, Proper, proper nouns like Adana, Greenwich, Tepeba, Ali, Mr. Trump do not need defining. They are already known. You can just give extra information about such nouns. For example, Tashköprü, which was built in the 4th century by the Romans, is now used only by pedestrians. This gives us extra information, and that's why it is put into commas, okay? And this is valid for all proper nouns given here. Another point is, when you have nouns with preceding modifiers like this, minibus, that person in front of the class, those people looking at us, Okay, these birds on the balcony, okay, um, you don't have to define them. Actually, you don't define them. They are already defined. For example, this minibus, you have already defined it, which almost always comes here full, doesn't stop here. This information should be put into commas because it gives extra information. Another point um, are the nouns about which we can just give extra information are, I mean, milk, flour, coal, rice, etc., etc., refer to a general concept that everyone already knows. That's why they don't need defining either. Okay, think of the word or concept of milk. What comes into your mind when you think of milk? A white substance that cows produce, right? 
when we talk about this concept, the white substance that comes from cows, that cows produce, okay, it doesn't need any definition. The same is valid for flower. When we think of flower in the wild, growing on their own, making us feel happy, we don't have to define them, okay? Coal and rice are like this as well, okay? Let's have a look at the examples here. Flowers, which everybody loves, sometimes need attention to grow. Milk, which is dispensable, very necessary, especially for babies, should be boiled well before drinking, okay? The information given here, okay, they give us extra information. Therefore, they need to be put into comma. The relative pronoun that cannot be used in non-defining relative clauses, okay? Instead of that, we use other pronouns like uh, who or which, okay? Of course, who is for people, which for non-people. For example, do you know George Haji, who played very well for Galatasaray before his retirement? So it is a noun. It is a noun. So it is the subject of the relative clause, but we must use who in the extra information clauses not that or never that. No relative pronouns or adverbs can be omitted in non-defining relative clauses. I would like to repeat it. No relative pronouns or adverbs can be left out in non-defining relative clauses. When the relative clause gives extra information, the relative pronoun here whatever it is, it might be a subject like this here, it might be in the form of a direct object here, you can never omit them, leave them out from the relative clause. A toucher, for example, whom I always refer to very often in my life, was an excellent soldier and a perfect statesman. Okay, whom I always refer to very often in my life. It is non-defining and all the whom is the direct object here in the relative clause, you can never omit it. There is another important note I would like to share with you because a non-defining relative clause is an extra information clause you can easily omit it from the sentence and the meaning never changes or becomes meaningless. For example, my car, which I bought some 20 years ago, is starting to cause me some problems. This is extra information. If it is extra, we don't need it to define our car, which is already defined. So. We can easily omit this part and we can read the statements like this. My car is starting to cause me some problems. I mean, omitting this, leaving this information out, I mean, does not bother us at all. My student Idil doesn't want to be a doctor, but I want to give some extra information about my student Idil, and I say, my student Idil, whose parents are both doctors at university, doesn't want to be a doctor. Or Istanbul, where more than 15 million people live, is the heart of Turkey. Is it necessary to add here? Not necessary. It is already known. Or Adana, which I was born in, is it really very important for me to tell you that I was born in the city? No. Let's omit this bit 
and see how the sentence reads. Adana used to be the center of agriculture before 1980s. It sounds excellent. Note five, people. In non-defining relative clauses, we use who, whom, and whose plus noun for people. Let's study the examples here. Mr. Erdogan, who is the president, has been running the country since 2002. Be careful. It is Mr. Erdogan, and instead of Mr. Erdogan, I can only use who, not that. And it is in the subject position here. A teacher whom I always talk about in my lessons is my idol. See? It is a noun, it is a name, whom is on the direct object position, and I can easily use it like this, okay? Do you remember the politician on TV now? The politician on TV now, whose children got very rich after he became a member of the parliament? So, for um, in non-defining relative close, uh, closes, we use who, whom, and whose plus noun for people, and which and whose plus noun for things and animals. Like, I need to repair that green table, which green table, whose legs are broken, okay? But that green table already tells us, I mean, um, that this object is known to us, okay? We can use where for place. Turkey, where there are four seas on its three sides, is a peninsula. Or, I've never been to Russia, which is not far away from Turkey, okay? So, instead of a place, I use where. And when for time, I can say at the same time, okay? Let's, I mean, try whether we can answer the questions here correctly. Can you please uh, try to join the following pairs of sentences by means of a relative pronoun or adverb using commas if necessary, of course. I mean, if uh, you are making a non-defining relative clause, you have to put it in commas. And mind you, you cannot use that as a relative pronoun if you are making a non-defining relative clause. One of the most important dates in Turkish history is 29 October 1923. See, because the Republic of Turkey was founded then. It refers to time, remember? So, one of the most important dates in Turkish history is 29 October 1923, blah, blah, blah. Ugas is a popular ski resort. You can always enjoy yourself there in winter, there. So we need to use a relative uh, adverb actually referring to place. Huh? Ugas, blah, 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 is a popular ski resort. In the third one, it says, I hate wearing the clothes. They distinguish me from my friends. So the clothes. Do they need definition or are we going to give just extra information about them? Watch out, be careful. Summer is the season I like that time best. So are we going to define the season here or are we going to give extra information about it? Watch out. Do you remember the man? His son was a famous actor abroad. 
the same question is valid here, okay? And be careful about the relative pronoun here, okay? Because it will show possession. The rice is always so delicious, my mom cooks it. So it is not rice, general rice, be careful. It is the rice your mom cooks, so be careful. It is again in the same way in the seventh question. The milk is really delicious. We buy it from our village, mind you. So number eight says, I like Mr. Errol. It is a noun. I always spend my free time with him every weekend. Let's see the answers now. Oh, the ninth. I love spending time with my sisters and brother, okay? They love me more than anyone, my sisters and brother. So all we have to do is to give extra information about them, right? Their car. So I believe, I mean, we need to give extra information about this car again. Their car cost them too much money. They get it repaired once a month. So give extra information about it. Time to see the key this time, I hope. Great. Uh, one of the most important dates in Turkish history is 29 October 1923, when the Republic of Turkey was founded. It gives us extra information. Therefore, we have to put it, we have to put comma here. Ugas, where you can always enjoy yourself in winter, is a popular ski resort. It gives us extra information. I hate wearing the clothes. Which clothes do I hate wearing? Which that distinguish me from my friends. No comma necessary because this defines this now. Summer is the season. I like that time best. Summer is the season. I like best. Which I like best. That I like best. It gives necessary information about the season. Do you remember the man whose son was a famous actor? Whose son was a famous actor defines the man. Therefore, it is necessary. The rice my mom cooks is always so delicious. It gives necessary information about it. The milk we buy from our village, it gives necessary information is really delicious. I like Mr. Arrow, who always, who I always spend my free time with every weekend. Mr. Arrow is a noun, and this information should be, uh, it gives us extra information, and we should use the comma here. I love spending time with my sisters and brother who love me more than anyone. And of course, because it shows I'm an extra information, we need to use a comma here. Their car, comma, which they get repaired once a month, comma, cost them too much money because this information is extra. It just uh, gives us extra information. Therefore, it should be put into commas. Um, there is another important point about non-defining relative clauses. Uh, we sometimes use which, the relative pronoun which, to modify to define a whole sentence. Can you just have a look at this bit? 
Edda got a rather poor mark in the exam. This depressed her a lot. Instead of this, this time we use which. And this which refers to the statement given here. Edda got a rather poor mark in the exam, which depressed her a lot. Here, which refers to the whole sentence, Edda got a, got a rather poor mark in the exam. They financially helped me a lot in the past. I appreciated it so much. So we say they financially helped me a lot in the past which I appreciated so much. It is next to impossible for us to fly to New York. This is so bad. It is next to impossible for us to fly to New York, comma, which is so bad. We should never forget about this, comma, either. Combine the two sentences below as shown in the previous example. So, Mr. Itar is a grumpy person. Don't forget the comma here. Blah, blah, makes him hard to work with. Number two says, I'm very clumsy. I'm very clumsy. Don't forget this thing here. And blah, blah, makes me unwanted among my friends. In the end, school starts next Monday. See, instead of this, we are going to put comma and the relative pronoun, okay? And we should continue with that. My grandpa refuses to eat anything. Do not forget about the comma and this one as well. Mr. Itar is a grumpy person which makes him hard to work with. I'm very clumsy, which makes me unwanted among my friends. In the end, school starts next Monday, which I'm really looking forward to. My grandpa refuses to eat anything, which I'm worried about. Thanks a lot, people, for listening to me.